let's head straight to Kenya and look at one man who, yes, he used to be a rugby player, that is a former Rugby Sevens International, Dennis Ombachi. He reinvented himself to become a social media star with a global fan base in just a few years. Now he has 2.3 million followers on TikTok and 1.4 million on Instagram. Known as a Roman chef, Ombachi produces dynamically edited video shots against the backdrop of the Kenyan capital skyline and featuring his trademark monosyllabic commentary that has earned him the major awards and accolades uh, uh, in the world of uh, content creation. And featuring his trademark monosyllabic commentary that earned him the 2022 TikTok Award for Best African Content. A former Rugby Sevens international, Dennis Ombachi has reinvented himself to become a social media star with a global fan base in just a few years. He now has 2.3 million followers on TikTok and 1.4 million on Instagram. Known as the Roman Chef, Ombachi produces dynamically edited videos shot against the backdrop of the Kenyan capital skyline and featuring his trademark monosyllabic commentary that earned him the 2022 TikTok Award for Best African Content Creator. It was a fitting acknowledgement of his journey to recoup his balance after a fight with mental ailment. The depression, I think, has, it's something that has always been there, like even before I started playing rugby, but it, it sort of um, manifested itself more um, in my later uh, playing, playing days, my later years of my, of my, of my career. Famous in his East African country for scoring the winning try that took Team Kenya's Rugby Sevens to the Rio 2016 Olympics, Ombachi played the global circuit for a decade, also participating in two World Cups in 2013 and 2018. A leg fracture in 2017 was a turning point and then his demons confronted him. He was hospitalized several times before being diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 2018, which was initially hard to take, but proved to be a blessing in retrospect. Yeah, I think after the diagnosis, so for me it was sort of a blessing in disguise because it was able to answer a lot of questions, you know, um, uh, about my life, my my personality, my actions, my behaviors, my reactions. Cooking has been Ombachi's constant companion ever since his trips to Hong Kong, Dubai, and Las Vegas for rugby. But away from the stadium, he felt a bit empty. Yes, I was good in sports, I was successful. But outside there, you know, when, when the stadium lights are off, I'm like, my life is a bit empty, so I need something else to feel it and then I was like yeah I'll try I'll try food so it was a challenge yeah it sort of kept me sane kept me through my depressive um, periods and yeah that's how my love with food started following the COVID-19 pandemic the decline of his sporting career and the birth of his first child the self-taught chef turned his full attention to creating videos success initially on TikTok came in 2021 his videos now garner up to 54.6 million views and his balcony has assumed iconic status, playing host to the African 100 meters record holder Ferdinand Omanyala and Nigeria's Afrobeat star Davido. Ombachi's secret is to keep the videos short and snappy. Yeah, I decided to make them short, snappy and focus more on the mechanics of cooking like not just open the video uh no story no background story that oh my grandmother taught me this when i travel to here nobody wants to to listen to that people came to watch the food like make the food the the story don't try and outshine the food in 2017 the world health organization said kenya ranked sixth among african nations affected by depressive disorders mbachi who continues to see a therapist Place down his struggle. Mm, yeah, people just came to believe it's, it's my personality. It's Ombachi being, being Ombachi, you know. I will switch off my phone, they'll try to reach me, they won't reach me for, for, for a while, and then I'll snap out of it, I'll show up for training, 
So yeah, a lot of things, just being socially um, withdrawn. At a particular point in time, I was drinking a lot. Uh, so it was just trying to, to cope with it. There was a lot of self-harm here and there. I used to harm myself, you know, cut yourself a bit. So I, I also still have like some <laughs> scars over here. I will urge, you know, anyone who's maybe walked the journey to come out because you never know who you're motivating. Um, you need to end the stigma about such conditions because at the end of the day, it's just, it's just like diabetes, you know, maybe diabetes of the, drain, of the brain, you know, the same way a diabetic has to take insulin from time to time, you have to take your meds from time to time, a diabetes has to go see the doctor for checkups here and there, you have to go see your therapist, the psychiatrist. Besides filming videos, he stages events with food brands, supermarkets, embassies and orders. His dream is to host former U.S. President Barack Obama on his balcony. Now this is the story of former Kenyan rugby player Dennis Mbachi, who became a TikToker using cooking as a means to fighting depression. Dennis Mbachi, the man who fought depression and of course uh, he got on social media became a superstar when it comes to TikTok uh, and Instagram, has over 54.5 million views on his videos from a rugby player who now uses cooking to fight depression. Um, is this a case of, um, no, I, I don't think it's a case of hunger begets talent. No, I don't think so. Mm. I think his case is very significant. Mm. You know, I personally I can relate because I've undergone two major surgeries. Mm. So I, sometimes it's easy to slip into depression. Definitely. Yeah, you may not be too lucky to have the support system to have people who love you around. Mm. You know, so that period of recovery, mm. uh, especially for a young man who used to be very active, yeah. all of a sudden you discover that you, you are you know, in one place for months, for years, and um, you can't help yourself. So it's very easy to slip into depression. So mm. I, I relate quite you know, well with what he, he has said. But I, I think um, he's an exceptional human being. You know, to have um, you know um, been able to dig deep uh, to discover his talent. Mm. Perhaps he had the talent all along. Uh, perhaps this was his destiny all mm. along. You know, sometimes when things happen, you have to look it, look at it from different options, from different angles. Maybe for for some of us who are spiritual, you know, uh, maybe it's a way of God telling you that um, this rugby is you're supposed to may be. not make mm -hmm. you popular. This cooking or whatever vocation could make you popular. I see mm. where it has taken him. Mm. And you see, you see, a lot of people are going through a lot all over the world. And this story will kind of give them hope that if they dig deep and believe in their talent, in what they can do, you don't really need um, government. You don't really need a lot. He just started uh, as a TikToker mm -hmm. and see where this thing has taken. He has, he's now moving with uh, people of timber and caliber, yeah. high profile individuals like uh, Davido, and uh, he said his ambition is to uh, meet um, Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. Who knows, very soon, Obama could uh, invite him to the U.S. or yeah. come over to Kenya because Obama is originally yeah. from uh, Kenya. Mm -hmm. you know, so these are things that uh, a lot of us relate with. And life is not, um, it doesn't end when calamity happens to you. Mm. There are challenges. That is the journey of life. But you must dig deep. You must um, remain steadfast. You must also believe in yourself, in your abilities, and have confidence. Even when people are saying that you can't do it, Definitely. You continue to do it until you succeed. Mm. Continue to do it until you succeed. This is one man who played rugby for Kenya, and he did score a couple of tries for Kenya. And it wasn't like he was a bad rugby player. He also was quite interesting to watch. I also qualified Kenya for the Olympic Games and all of that. So he is quite important when it comes to playing rugby. But yes, depression set in, but he had to channel that energy into something else. And yeah. it is quite great for him. Yeah, definitely. You know, just like you said, he was successful for Kenya at rugby. He said that himself. And um, I think this just goes to show you that um, irrespective of whatever profession that you choose to go into, mm. there are some issues that are just much bigger and more important than your job. And I think his mental health was, um, it was really at stake for a long time. Mm. And um, going into work, becoming a professional rugby player, then made it more pronounced because you know being a professional rugby player there are a lot of demands on you let's not forget that kenya is one of the best countries when it comes to rugby in africa um, alongside south africa as well so they're one of the leading champions of, of of rugby and when you're in the limelight representing kenya you know 
you begin to think because you need to be on good behavior. You need to be the best at, mm -hmm. at, at all times when it comes to rugby. And I'm sure he was feeling the pressure. And, you know, he definitely took a toll on his mental health. And, you know, just like he said, sometimes he just sleeps. He just disappears. He's not picking anybody's call. He's not turning up for training. And then they begin to wonder what's wrong with him. And, you know, during that period, there were many reports coming out from the media. And loads of those reports were not so good because, you know, the media was just running with false stories. No one ever knew really what was happening. You know, there were some stories going about maybe he had a bad character. Um, I remember there was one story that, you know, falsely fabricated his, uh, his, and misquoted his manager at that time saying, you know, he caused trouble in the dressing room, which wasn't factual in any way whatsoever. But you know what? I'm glad that um, he's come out with his story um, and his story has helped to change his life as well. And then his story definitely would help other athletes who are currently in that state. You know, listening to him speak, it reminds me of Jordan Ibe. Jordan Ibe was a promising star mm. from Liverpool's academy, uh, someone who was even touted to be much better than Raheem Sterling. Yeah. But, you know, right now, Jordan Ibe, due to depression, you know, he, he didn't speak to anyone. He just slipped into it, had unsuccessful loan spells, and it affected him. You know, but now he's much better. But, I mean, he's not at the level he used to be. Now he's playing mm. non-league football. And it's, it's really difficult when you're trying to chase your dream or you're trying to chase something you think will be good for you, but, you know, um, it, it just seems to be that life has, has taken a different turn. Mm. And at the end of the day, you know, just like only what you said, you know, sometimes um, you might be thinking one thing, but the author and the finisher of life has a different story for you. Yeah. So, I, I mean, um, sometimes one, one door closing means another door is opening. Is so definitely I'm very much happy for him. He's doing very well for himself. And he's, he's, um, he's positively impacting a lot of lives. Because a lot of people take his cooking recipes, mm -hmm. you know, they love it as well, and they try it. And um, I really hope he does get to cook for Barack Obama. Mm. Hopefully. Hopefully.